Yo, what's up, my internet friends? It's your girl, Nim Sticks. And so today I'm just going to kind of be doing an introduction to Adobe Fresco. So Adobe Fresco has been out for a little bit, for a while now. It's a drawing application from Adobe. And they initially had Adobe Draw. So Adobe Fresco is the replacement for Adobe Draw. Adobe Draw was an application that allowed you to draw in vectors, which is pretty doggone impressive. Like... Having a nice application, especially on an iPad, something mobile that would allow you to draw in vectors is, is pretty like a big thing. So it was, it was definitely a great application and whatnot. They came out with Adobe Fresco, which is just taking it to the, the next level. They introduced a whole bunch of new brushes that you can use, which are really, really great. Still got the vector brushes. brushes. It's, it's really it's really a dope application so um i wanted to go ahead and just kind of feature it because i've been using it just a little bit every now and then with kind of drawing some characters and i think i want to be using it a little bit more on my channel getting back into um uh, kind of i don't want to say character design but just drawing whatever i feel like it so anyway so let's go ahead and just dive into it really quickly um just kind of showing you some of the main features and some of the things that i like really really appreciate so when you first jump into the home screen um a real nice fresh interface that they're dealing with here if you want to take a tour if you want to learn more about adobe fresco you definitely can because they got this learn tab over here to um to the left on the left panel and like all of these tutorial videos are literally with under six minutes i think like yeah like five minutes and 30 seconds is one that's like the most amount of time um but quickly just kind of dive you in and help you understand the the workspace the interface the different tools and things that you have and how everything works how to do certain selections and masks and all of those great things you have the functionality to do all of that and that's some of the things you didn't have in adobe draw pretty dope one of the things that i'm excited about the most in this particular app because it's not in um the photoshop version of ipad and it's not oh i think it is in arrow possibly don't quote me on that i'll have to see when i actually do a video on arrow but it's the gallery so the gallery page here allows you to see the work that everybody else is doing so you don't have to go to like a separate website to go get inspiration or to look at other people's you know creations to try to just you know motivate you or inspire you in a different way you get it all right here within the app and what's really dope is that they started allowing you to see the live stream so people be live streaming and you could directly tap into their live stream just from here and watch them go ahead and you know create whatever it is that they're creating which is um, pretty sweet that's something that behance has started to preview kind of like in beta mode but they've integrated it into the gallery within fresco which i thought was excellent and of course then you can kind of just scroll and you can actually see artwork that's all been designed in fresco so initially you'll probably look at it and think like oh i can only create certain things within here nah buddy if you look at everything that's been created like dude i've had illustration like all of this this right here is dope and it actually takes you into that person's Behan's portfolio just from, oh, he made a dope calendar. They're pretty sweet. Yeah, like all of this, this is all sweet. And all of it is made with Fresco. You can see um, the FR in the corner that lets you know that that's the tool that they use. So, I mean, like it's, it's truly endless. Like a lot of these things you, you probably could have done in Adobe Draw, but just the added functionality of the selections and the mask and stuff makes this, it, yeah. And then you got the live stream. Um, this particular person, I actually really like Fresh Cake. I love his designs. Uh, he does a lot of live streaming. And if you look into the live stream, they got this tool timeline, which is down. So if you're watching a live stream and you're like, oh, what was that brush he used? What was that tool he did? How did he do that? You literally got the tool timeline right here where you can just go to the timestamp and be like, oh, that's what he was using. That's dope. If there's actual like... Uh, narration the person is talking check this out so this is a, a live stream from cal webster which is an absolute immaculate person when it comes to making brushes you not only have his tool timeline but because he was talking you got a transcript so if you still couldn't figure out like what he was actually doing you got the dude's words right there like come on now come on so the gallery i'm really excited about and how they integrated that if you got a creative cloud subscription of course, you can have all of your work transfer over to different devices that you're working on, whether it's on a PC and Mac and you're running Adobe applications there, or if you're on the iPad, I got all my stuff right here. You can choose to have that sync or not. It's totally up to you, but I like the fact that I can start something on my iPad. Uh, I can even launch 
Photoshop on iPad, continue it there. And then if I really need to do some fine tuning and some other stuff, then I can pull it up Photoshop on my PC and still keep it moving. Um, and then I got to delete it. If I deleted some things, I can always go into my deleted tab. They'll be there temporarily. I don't know how long they hold until your deleted things, but you do have a way to restore something if you delete it and you want to get back. So pretty sweet. Um, one of the other things that I really, really like is how they are keeping um, the workspace, the interface kind of uniform between this uh, Photoshop on iPad, uh, Adobe Arrow on iPad. They're keeping just the, the same look and feel, which I think is dope because we also going to be expecting Illustrator in 20, is it this year? No. Maybe it is this year. I gotta look at it. I think it's next year, but it was actually last year when they announced it. It might've been this year. <laughs> but anyway, we're expecting Adobe Illustrator at some point on iPad. And you can already see this looks like Photoshop, like how they have this look. And this literally looks like the Photoshop on iPad. So it just makes it easier to when you start using these applications, even if you're not really sure how to use it, if you're familiar with one of them, then intuitively you're probably gonna be able to catch on to any of the other applications they put out because they keep the whole layout pretty much the same. Um, so I'm just going to create new, go into a current size. you got print size, you got digital size, you got all those different sizes that you can use. And this mug is really laying on my face. So let me turn down my brain now. I don't know why it was necessary to sing that. Um, so pretty sweet. So just a little bit about, was it, maybe no, maybe I want to put it back up. Look, it's just going to have to shine, shine bright like a diamond on my face. Um, so over here, you got all of your little tools and stuff like that. You click on them, you see them highlighting blue. These first three are like the brushes. These brushes are dope. This first one, if you click on it twice, it'll come up, tell you, you got your pixel brushes. This next one, these is live brushes, which is these bomb watercolors. And then you got your vector brushes. Come on. Then you got some other tools that you can go into. Um, the other thing that I like, if I go to one of these brushes, I have this kind of like my little brush pad on brush toolbar whatever you want to call it you can bring it out into your workspace you can even just go ahead and just dock it back on the side if you want um this is pretty sweet i can easily pick a color from the color picker you know all of that stuff your opacity uh, you have the size of your brushes the smoothing that i can go up and down right here then i got some additional settings just for my brush um the roundness the angle the taper then it, the, my, my pressure, if I want, you know, if, um, if I'm drawing in this light, I can make sure that the opacity is kind of light based upon the pressure that I'm giving the pen. Just really, really awesome things that they kind of put in here. Um, again, some of these settings were in Adobe Draw, but a lot of them were not. And it's just, it's really genius. These vector brushes, let me put this on a color that has some respect. Um, these vector brushes, dude, again, just being able to draw and vector, <sighs> is is great like it's amazing i can do whatever i can transform this after i draw it as you can with all vectors and whatnot i can flip the rotation horizontal vertical whatever the heck i need to do keep it moving over here on the right i have some ways that i can view my different layers which is pretty sweet um if i were to click this this bring my layer in and out oh maybe not on this one i'm kind of confusing it with photoshop on ipad with that, you have a different way that you can lay out your layers. This one just appears, you're either hiding them or making them visible. Here, you got some options as far as your layers. You got some different blend modes that you can change your full layer to. This is how you add new layers right here. Um, if I wanted to turn the visibility on and off for a layer, and then I got these three dots, which gives me some other layer actions as far as duplicate and paste and copy and layer mask and all of that other stuff. Then this is pretty sweet. Let me go over here to a pixel brush and you got a ruler. I'm like, come on, man. Now, we did have this in Adobe Draw, and that was pretty sweet, but this makes it easy if you want to do some, like, just straight lines. That's pretty dope. And then, of course, you have the this touch button. So this touch button over here gives you some additional options depending on the tool that you have selected. Um, for instance, I don't know all of the touch shortcuts, but if I have, I don't, of course, like if I have a brush like how I have it, I hold this down, it should turn it to an eraser. There it is, it does. And then you can turn on, if you notice, I had that tip just pop up over there to the right, it says eraser brush. You can um, you can turn those on. I turn mine on so that it, tell, it tells me what I'm actually doing. Um, this is not gonna be erased for everything. Let me see, if I go into maybe transform, hold this down, it's scaling from the center. If I let it go, then I can kind of change the aspect. Oh no, well, I'm still scaling, but this one's actually scaling from the center. Yeah, so you got different you got different ways to use things based upon how you use this touch shortcut, and you can move it anywhere that you want to, which is 
pretty, pretty dumb. So pretty excited about that. I really like this application. It helps when I just want to incorporate some really nice colors, maybe in something that I'm working on in Photoshop. I'll come here and I'll da 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 da, -da. Especially with these watercolors. Let me just give you a little a demonstration of how these watercolors work, right? So I can just go real heavy on the water. Matter of fact, let me let me delete this. Now, one thing that I do want, and maybe maybe there's a way to do it, and I just don't know. Hold on, maybe maybe I gotta. Okay, no. I want to be able to just easily swipe left and right, like on these different. Oh, hold on, wait, I did something. Okay, maybe not. I want to just be able to like swipe left, right, up, down, or something on these on these layers to simply delete them, as opposed to highlighting it, clicking it, and what's in it. Um, you can also tell the different layers that you have already set to a certain type of layer. Like this one with the icon, you can tell that that's a pixel layer. Again, you can just look at the pixel brush and it'll tell you. Over here, you can tell because of the circle right here that that is a um, vector layer where I started doing vectors. So really easy. But anyway, let me show you. I'm sorry. Let me show you uh, these watercolors. So if I do a watercolor, you can kind of just see how it kind of bleeds out if I just hold it there. And then I can increase that. I can add more water to it so that the more I wasn't in, the more it kind of just bleeds. I can take less water. I mean, all the way, oh, I'm sorry. That's not less water. This is the flow. This is the flow, whether how hard it is when I'm uh, actually coloring with it. And if I keep coloring in the same spot, it'll build up. That's what my flow is controlling. Here's the water. My water flow is it's gonna really bleed out if I change my water flow down, then it's not it's not really going to bleed as I write. And so you can you can play with that to figure out, okay, how much do I want to bleed that? And then when you change your colors, you can really have these colors like bleed into one another. You can see that. Look at that. Look at that. Put that flow up. I'm like, yo, that's water bug. And so you can easily see how you can create something that's really dope in a fresco. Take it over to Photoshop, liquefy it, put some filters on it, skew it, all this other stuff over some text or something like that, and you jam it. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Fresco, I like it. Definitely better than Adobe Draw. Uh, can't compare it to Procreate. I won't even do that. Procreate is, is great as well. Like, don't have to compare. Don't have to get into comparing things. You know what I'm saying? Excellent application. Um, but you know, you know, with Adobe products, you got that integration between all your other applications. So if you're working in multiple softwares with Adobe, then, you know, it's nice to kind of have your work wherever you need it, when you need it, you got your color schemes, you got your stock photos and all that other stuff. So definitely easy to learn, easy to use and beautifully designed. So hopefully you guys like uh, Fresco, if you haven't tried it out, definitely try it out. Um, and I probably will be doing some more drawings on my channel using Fresco just to get a little bit more acclimated myself and hopefully help the community get acclimated with it. So if you like this video, you can always like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you tried out Fresco, if you do, whether you like it or not. Um, and I will catch you guys later. Huh.